Today on the Autocar Show, BMW's facelifted 7 Series. Yes, the one with the massive grill. In fact, today is all about grills and 7. Why launch one luxury car when you can have the choice of two? You like the saloon, you like the limo, that's the car for you. You want something higher up with more seats, seven seats in fact. Ladies and gentlemen, the new X7. First up, the 7 Series. Now you'll agree, because of that massive grille, there's no confusing this car with the old one. Objective number one achieved. And all things considered, I really do like the chin and those angular air intakes. And is that grille really that big? Or is it just that it's grown maybe a bit too fast? The ones on the S-Class, the 8 and the Lexus LS are all much bigger, aren't they? What I also like is the chrome highlight at the base of the door that looks neat and those partly blacked out taillights at the rear, they're nice too. There are some changes on the inside as well, but they aren't as noticeable. Now those familiar with the 7 Series will recognize all the high quality stuff here, the way the wood blends into this chrome, these delightful temperature adjustment features and other good bits like that. But what's new on this car is this touchscreen and the instrument panel that now comes with the hexagonal instruments. What the 7's Karotpati clientele will be more interested in is the quality inside. There's a richness to the leather upholstery on this new version that feels even more special. And get into the executive lounge seat and you can really stretch out. As I have cooled the seat and set the massage function and reclined it, I'm pretty comfortable in the back. And I've even pushed this front seat ahead. But the earlier car had all these features. What's new is that this now is a touchscreen and it's much more convenient to use and more intuitive. Of course, you also get this lovely tablet here that practically controls everything from the seats to the lighting to the sun protection to the climate comfort and anything else that has an electric function here. Now I know only few owners will get behind the wheel and really drive the 7. But this is a question we have to ask. Does it also drive better? What's pretty clear straight away is that this car is a lot more comfortable. There's a hush in the cabin that just wasn't there earlier. And what complements this perfectly is the comfortable ride. It's more supple now, it's softer. That little bit of a hard edge that was there earlier is gone. And that means overall comfort levels are much higher now. BMW has enhanced sound insulation and it sure has brought down road and wind noise. So, not only does it ride better, the new 7 is nicer to drive too. Now select Sport and the 7 is even a pleasure to drive. There isn't too much roll. The steering is nice and accurate and get into a rhythm and it really does feel sportier than you can believe. Those who selected the 30D version will also be opting for one of the best diesels around. Also extremely refined at low speed is the 30D engine. Driving around here at around 1500 RPM and I can barely hear the engine. Of course, if I put my foot down, it does get a bit noisier, but then what happens is the scenery starts blurring as well. There's plenty of performance on tap. And what's nice is that it responds almost instantly. There's just no delay in squeezing the throttle and the car being shot forward at a considerable speed. What a fantastic driving experience and drive at a fair pace for a good amount of time and the car almost seems to shrink around you. 
So the new 7 is great to drive, great to be driven in and even looks fantastic. So why would you want a big burly SUV? I get the answer soon enough. Wow, this thing is big. It's muscular, it stands ramrod straight and once it rolls in, you just can't take your eyes off it. BMW's long overdue answer to the Mercedes GLS isn't as long as the 7 series. However, it is 5.1 meters long, 2 meters wide and a massive 1.8 meters tall. The new X7 is just colossal and it needs to be to fit that third row of seats in the back. What's also clear is that this is no stretched X5. The X7's bonnet line and significantly longer rear overhang give it a more domineering look. It stands confident on its 21-inch wheels and though the grille here is huge as well, somehow it seems a more natural fit. Also around the back, the slender tail lamps have a more universal appeal and our test car's M-Sport body kit adds a bit more visual drama. But what's it like on the inside? So on the inside of the X7 and whichever way you look at it, it practically is a 7 series on stilts. Look at the finish, look at the fit, look at the materials they've used, the double stitching, the merino leather, the piano black, this fantastic chrome, the way it's blended in, the quality of the buttons, you have temperature controls, fan controls, heated seats, cool seats, massage seats, what have you. I even like some of the more blink bits like the crystal inlay on the iDrive dial, the cut glass gear lever, the six color ambient lighting that extends to the sunroof and then there's the fact that seat comfort is also up there with cars like the 7 series. Of course there's BMW's new iDrive function and the digital instrument display, the new one with the hexagonal instruments and small features which really do delight like these cup holders that are cooled and heated. You come over to the door panel and there's your massage function for your seat as well as the passenger and I can even move the second row seats back and forward via this button. Our test car featured a six seat configuration with individual captain's chairs but you can also get the more traditional bench that seats seven. Now if you have any doubt that the X7 is as comfortable as a full-fledged limousine all you need to do is get into this captain seat on the second row. It's just fabulously comfortable, super support for the back and the thighs. Small details like this adjustable elbow rest it really does make a difference to comfort levels and of course all the kit you could ever want. Stuff like of course you have your aircon controls here but four USBs there's two here and two at the bottom including an HDMI BMW is very mindful of how we use our devices in the back. Of course, one of the best sound systems on offer, that's the Bowers & Wilkins system. This screen here is a touchscreen, as is that one there. And in general, just the highest level and quality of leather you can find. This is merino leather and just feels beautiful to touch and to sit in. The dual pane panoramic sunroof makes the interior feel airier still. And what's also nice is that the electric blinds for the side windows are part of the package. The overall experience is great, but it's worth bringing up that the Volvo XC90 Excellence offers still more for the rear seat passengers. You get seat ventilation and even massage function. Now, one of the most important features of this car, of course, is that third row. And to access that, you fold this forward and this motorized seat moves out of the way. Of course, it takes its time. And then there's a good amount of space and it isn't actually all that difficult getting in. Once seated, there's a fair amount of space in the back. There's a decent amount of headroom. There's a good amount of leg room here. There's place for your shoulders and visibility is pretty good. The seat, however, is a bit too low as it is on most seven seaters, but reasonably long journeys a couple of hours in the back here shouldn't be too uncomfortable especially as 
you have stuff like your aircon controls here, you have a USB port, a cup holder, all in all, a pretty comfortable place to be sat. What's more, with all the seats up, you still get a healthy 326 litres of luggage space. And buttons in the boot also let you reconfigure the seats for maximum luggage space or maximum legroom. BMW's SUVs have built a reputation for taking the sport in sport utility rather seriously. And despite the bulk of the X7, all the ingredients for a good drive are here. It's built on the same platform that underpins the X5. The BMW's all-wheel drive system is pretty good. And the air suspension with its damper control is standard here too. But first up, let's see just how well it rides. The refinement is excellent. You have this double grace windscreen and plenty of insulation. And it rides beautifully as well. It swallows most of the holes we hit without a thud. It does get a bit floaty, especially over undulating roads like these. But then all you need to do is hit sport and it will fly straight and level again. Then of course we get to the corners. Now clearly this isn't as neat or as tidy as something like a Cayenne. But you'd be surprised how much you can really enjoy driving this car once you get into the rhythm of it. It incredibly is even good on tighter bits and the steering just adds so much to the game. It's a delight. What adds to the experience is a rather special 50D engine. This is still a straight six diesel, but this one has not one, not two, not three, but four turbochargers. That's two low pressure turbochargers and two high pressure turbos. The final power output stands at 400 horsepower. And to make the most of it in bends, there's even a spot differential at the rear. With 400 horsepower and 760 Nm, there sure is some performance as well. And that's despite the weight. The incredible bit is that this 50D engine pulls from just about anywhere in the power band. And when I say pull, I mean it pulls. BMW claim a 0 to 100 time of just 5.4 seconds. And looking at the pace, I wouldn't counter that. Just think about it, 5.4 seconds to 100 for this 2.4 ton beast. That feels pretty quick. And the great part is it even sounds good. It has a nice rotty burble to it, not diesel-like at all. But this 50D will only come at a later stage and the X7 will go on sale in 30D guys powered by a 265 horsepower 3-litre diesel that actually isn't a slouch. 0 to 100 here too comes up in 7 seconds dead. In the final analysis, reasons to be interested in the 7 series include improvements to refinement, a more comfortable ride, and considerably sharper handling. If you liked what the 7 had to offer earlier, well, you'll just love this new one. All in all, a much more rounded package. Still, it's the X7, the 7 series of SUVs actually, that's the bigger deal here. Why just have a luxury car when you can have one that seats 7 and has all the extra presence of that locomotive-like profile? This may be BMW's first proper 7-seat luxury SUV, but there's little doubt this is right up there with the best. Range Rover, Mercedes, this is one to watch out for. <laughs>